Hello everybody, this is Joseph Norman. Welcome to our third lesson with Pure Data for our digital music making class. Today we're going to be building a ring modulation synthesizer for our sequencer and looking at a few new objects to create some interesting new complications in what we've already been working on. All right, so to begin, I've already named our new patch Lesson 3. You're going to want to do the same thing. And then we're going to want to begin by building our synthesizer patch inside of a sub patch. And of course, we're going to want to make it polyphonic, which is what this is going to do. So uh, first, let's go ahead and save this as a new file name. Uh, we'll just call this Lesson 3 AM Poly. All right, go ahead and click in here. We're going to create our inlet all the way down there. Let's move that up to the top of the screen. All right, and then uh, let's go ahead and create our M to F, all right, our MIDI to frequency. And then let's create an oscillator. All right, we'll have the M to F go there. All right, we're going to create a signal multiplier here. Good. And in order to do our um, AM modulation, we're going to make another oscillator this time. Let's use the phasor, our sawtooth, to act as our modulator. Um, okay, so we have our phasor right there. And in order to have this act as real AM instead of ring modulation, we want to make it a unipolar signal. A signal. So let's do this. We're going to Phasor will normally output a series of values between negative 1 and 1. So let's add 1 to the signal. So now it's going to create values between 0 and 2. And we'll create a signal multiplier for it. And we'll say 0 0.5. So now the values that it's outputting will be between 0 and 1. Excellent. And then let's go ahead and connect that there to the right inlet of our signal multiplier. Okay, um, now and uh, what we want to do here, let's go ahead and make it so that our phaser is actually going to be, uh, its frequency will be a ratio of the frequency coming into the oscillator. So let's just create, oops, we don't want it to attach to there. Let's create a new object and we're just going to make a multiplier box. I'm just going to say multiple one for now. And then, in that case, what we want to do is make a trigger float float for our M to F. And we have the left inlet go to our oscillator, and the right inlet go to this multiplier box. And then, of course, this will go to phasor. All right. And then, let's go ahead and create a new receive object. And we're just going to say this, uh, call this uh, receive uh, mod freak. Okay. M O D F 4 E Q. Okay. Whoop, and I forgot an F in there. There we go. Okay. So then, the next portion of this, what we will want to do is create our, well actually first let's go ahead and create a low pass filter, okay? Uh, we're going to LOP tilde and let's just placeholder value 10,000, okay? And then we're going to actually have another float come out of the M to F and let's have this one be a multiple as well. And we'll attach this here. And this will tell us how many of the higher partials on those uh, sidebands we're going to generate will come through. And let's create another receive and say our brightness. Okay, and we're going to put that here. And we're going to go ahead and attach that to the right inlet. All right, receive brightness. Let's make this a little bit bigger for now here. Okay, and then the next stage, what we want to do here is create our envelope generator. So let's create another signal multiplier. We're going to attach the low pass filter 
to the left inlet and then I'm going to make a pack one five hundred a delay five hundred okay and then another pack zero five hundred all right I'm going to attach the delay to this pack here and we're going to create our v-line tilde okay and we attach both the pack to the left inlet of our v-line and then let's add a couple b's a couple bangs to our tfff tfff b b all right and we're going to attach this bang here and then we're going to attach the bang to this delay okay all right and then let's attach our v-line to that Let's attach our inlet now to our M to F. Okay. Ooh, I'm going to need to resave the name of this uh, patch here. We're going to say lesson 3 am poly dot cl dot pd. Okay. That's going to be an important detail. Okay. And then we're going to create an outlet tilde and we're going to attach that signal multiplier there oh and we want to create a couple receives uh, the first receive will say attack and then we're going to create a mm, uh, new object and it's going to say trigger float float and the first inlet or the first outlet rather is going to go to the right inlet of pack one and the second outlet will go to the right inlet of the delay okay and then we're going to make another receive receive release and then that can just go directly into the pack 0500 okay let's go ahead and save lesson 3 a.m. poly okay and let's go to our master patch. Uh, the first thing, let's just go ahead and create that clone right now while it's fresh here. So clone lesson three am poly dot cl and we'll say 64. All right, there it is. All right, um, let's create a DAC. We're going to be needing that in short order. And then let's go ahead and create a signal multiplier and say 0 0.5 for now. Okay. Good. All right. Kind of reverse engineering this patch here. Next thing we want to do is create our vertical sliders. So let's go ahead and create uh, one here. And we're going to go to the properties and we're going to change the lower range to 20 and the upper range to 10,000. And we're going to say logarithmic. Okay. And then we're going to create a number box to go under that. Command 3. And then under the number box, we're going to create a new uh, object and say send attack. Okay. And then let's just duplicate that. And this one will say, remember Command D to duplicate after you select all of it. And this one will be send release. Okay. Now then let's create another on vertical slider and this one let's say this is going to be between 0 0.1 to 5 logarithmic okay and then this we're going to create a number box to come out of that oh, there's a message remember command 3 for number and then a new object and send mod freak okay that's going to change the ratio of the uh, modulating wave okay and then we need to control our brightness for the low pass filter so we'll create one oh let's do a v slider shift command v 
and then the lower range for this, let's say 1, and the upper range, let's say 12. Once again, logarithmic. Okay, we're going to create our number box, and then we're going to create our send, and we will create, uh, we have to name it uh, brightness. There we go. All right. So now we have these controls. Okay. So now we just need to start sending information to our cloned uh, synthesizer here. So to begin, let's create our metronome. And we'll just start it with a given value here of 250. We'll create our toggle switch, right? We'll shift command T for toggle. Okay. We'll put that here. And then what do we want to do? Let's create a random. And let's just say random 8. Okay. And then let's create another random. And we'll say random 4. Okay. And we're going to create a TBB -B between the metronome and these two randoms. Okay. We'll have this left one go here, and then this right one go here. All right, and then what we want to do is we're going to create a new object called select. And what select does, we can just uh, shorthand it, S-E-L for cell. And let's say select 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay? And then let's create another one, select cell, S-E-L. Zero, one, two, three. All right. And so now what select does is when it receives a number, if that number corresponds to one of these, it will send it out of a different outlet. Okay, so if you send out the number four, for instance, you have zero, one, two, three, four, it's going to come and send a bang out of this outlet. So what this can do is we can create messages then that will receive a certain bang from one of these outlets and then transmit to this. So rather than having a series of random numbers, for instance, uh, MIDI numbers 60 to 71 creating chromatic scale, we can write out the MIDI numbers that correspond to other types of scales or pitch collections and kind of control what we're diffusing from our uh, MIDI note generator, basically. Okay, so let's go ahead and create some messages. Okay, 60. Let's do 62. 64. Okay. 65. 67. Move these over a little bit. 69. 71, and 72 to complete the octave there. And so what I've built here is just a, a major scale. You have a whole step, a whole step, a half, a whole, another whole, and another whole, and then a half step to bring us to the octave. That's how you build a major scale. And this is a major scale on C, since remember 60 is middle C on the keyboard. Okay, let's connect up our outlets here. Okay, and then we're going to create some other messages. Command 2. And these will correspond to rhythmic values being fed into the metronome. So let's say 250 is the, well, let's make it 125. Let's make them pretty quick for now. Okay, and then let's make another message. Let's say 250. We're pretending our tempo is one second, so 60 beats per minute. So 125 would be 30 second notes. 250 would be 16th notes. 500 will be eighth notes. And then, oops, that's a number, not a message. And then 1,000 will be our quarter notes. So now. Not only will random 
here be sending out numbers for the select to choose from for our major scale. It's going to be also selecting different numbers to correspond with our rhythmic durations. Okay. So let's feed these messages back up here into our random. If I can get it to connect. <laughs> here we go. And then let's feed these here into the clone. Oh, I forgot another important detail. We need a message. Remember, next dollar sign one. And actually, all of these MIDI numbers are going to be going into this message. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and test out what we have so far. Oh, let's make sure we have audio going to both speakers. Okay. Let's go ahead and make sure our DSP is turned on. Okay. And then um, let's go ahead and set some values for attack for our release, uh, pick a random value for our mod frequency, and then let's go ahead and set our brightness. Okay, and let's see what we have. Cool. And we can change our tone. Increase our attack. Change our brightness. You hear the difference? Getting a bit of a brighter, harsher sound there. Okay. Mm, that's kind of nice. Make longer releases. Okay. We can also do some other cool things. We can uh, create some harmony. Uh, or actually rather some counterpoint, for instance. Let's create a new object, and this one's called pipe. And pipe will delay a message by a certain amount. So let's say for now, pipe 2000 over here. Okay, and let's create another pipe. I'm going to say pipe 4000. Okay, all right. And now let's go ahead and connect up our message boxes for our pitches over here to the left pipe. And let's connect them over here to the right pipe. And then let's just go ahead and connect these two pipes to our next message. And then let's see what happens now. So now we basically have a cannon. Let's do some other interesting things. Let's create an addition box. Plus 12, plus 24. So this means what pipe will do is it's going to add 12 on the output to these messages that are coming, to, uh, coming through these addition boxes. We'll rather add 12 and 24, meaning that it will transpose the notes that are delaying their entrances by one octave and two octaves, respectively. So let's go ahead and do that. And you should be able to hear. I can get it to actually attach. 
There we go. Okay. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and change our scale. So we're going to take the third and change that to 63. That would be a minor third. And then let's take 69 and change that to 68. And so now, we actually have a harmonic minor scale. But wait, there's more! We can do some other cool things. Let's create a trigger bang, 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 bang to come out of the metronome. And then let's take our random four and the select zero, one, two, three, and its four messages, and let's duplicate those twice. Whoop. Yes, my startup disk is almost full. Okay. And then let's go ahead and move this one and this select and these four messages over here. And let's send a bang out to this one. And then let's send the third bang out to this one. And let's change these values. Let's say we want 2000... 1250, 1500, and 3000. And for this one, let's say we want 3000, 4000, 6000, and 8000. So now, what will happen? And we can uh, feed these messages into each pipe, the right inlet of the pipe. And this will change the delay. So while the rhythmic cannon, or rather while the pitches were happening in cannon before the rhythms were just uh, delayed, so it was a pure cannon. But now we're going to have rhythmic variation, even though the pitches will basically be the same. So there we go. And now let's go ahead and change our brightness, bring our brightness down. Let's create some long releases. Change our tone a little bit. Lower those releases a little. There we go. Now we've created some pretty interesting results. Oh, you know what I notice is our second outlet from the trigger bang, 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 bang is going to the right inlet for our random four. And we actually want that to go to our left inlet. This should help with some of that rhythmic variation that we want. Let's hear what that sounds like. All right, that's a little bit better. All right, that'll do it for our lesson. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.